This is super interesting. Brad Bear has now responded to the criticism of him for, in his interview with Vice President Kamala Harris, not playing at one moment the full context of a clip that Harris referenced. She brought up Trump talking about the enemy from within and how the military might have to deal with that. And when he cites what the enemy from within is, he cites Adam Schiff, a Democratic congressman, a very authoritarian threat. And Harris brings this up in the interview, as we talked about yesterday, and we even talked about how they don't play the part that she's talking about. And so then she calls out Brett Bear for that. And also in the town hall with Harris Faulkner, when she plays the enemy from within clip, she doesn't play the full context where he says the military should deal with this. And that outrage about that being cut out has now been responded to by Brett Bear. Before getting to his response, very interesting, I do want to play again for, or as a reminder, what happened in the interview. We asked that the question to the former president today. Harris Faulkner had a, a town hall, and this is how he responded. Again, as I keep reminding you, please do remember to click the subscribe button if you haven't already. I heard about that. They, they were saying I was like threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. They're the ones doing the threatening. They do phony investigations. I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. He was the greatest. Oh gangster. No, it's right. true. We no, but think question. of it. It's called weaponization of government. It's a terrible thing. So, Brett, I, I'm sorry. And with all due respect, that clip was not what he has been saying about the enemy within that he has repeated. When he's speaking about the American people, that's not what you just showed. Well, he was asked no, about that no, specific... No, 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 that's not what you just showed in all no, fairness no, no, no. and I'm respect you to you. I'm telling you that was the question that we asked him. Uh, he didn't show that, and here's the bottom line. He has repeated it many times, and you and I both know that. And you and I both know that he has talked about turning the American military on the American people. He has talked about going after people who are engaged in peaceful protest. He has talked about locking people up because they disagree agree with him. This is a democracy. And in, in a democracy, the President of the United States in the United States of America should be willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. And this is what is at stake, which is why you have someone like the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying what Mark Milley has said about Donald Trump being a threat to the United States of America. A really solid, solid moment from that interview because she catches the fact, I don't know if she was exactly referencing that in that moment they didn't play the right clip and in the town hall they didn't, but they didn't in both. And it, I'm pretty sure what I'm about to play for you is the first time Fox News actually allowed the full context of this because they were called out by Kamala Harris uh, to be played. Which is not just, even though this is bad by itself, the enemy from within language, Trump saying, you know, our adversaries abroad, terrorist organizations or dictators abroad, they're not as bad as enemies from within. And then if you go a little longer, eventually he specifies like the lunatic far left people such as Adam Schiff or at different times he'll say crazy Nancy Pelosi. And then him saying the military should be used to deal with the these uh, enemy from within sort of people. And to Brett Bear's credit, he did end up after both Kamala Harris called him out and individuals uh, defending her stance have pointed out he came on the air and said he made a mistake and he gave all of the context. Here it is. Harold, I did make a mistake and I want to say that mistake. When I called for a soundbite, I was expecting a, a piece of the enemy from within, from Maria Bartiromo's interview, mm. to be tied to the piece from your town hall, Harris, mm -hmm. where you asked the former president about the enemy from within. It just had the piece about the town hall. And it did, just take a listen to okay. what I we'll meant to roll. I think the bigger problem is the enemy from within, not even the people that have come in and destroying our country. We have some sick people, radical left lunatics. And I think they're the and, and it should be very easily handled by, if necessary, by National Guard or if really necessary, by the military. They were saying I was like threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. They're the ones doing the threatening. They do phony investigations. 
I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. He was the greatest oh gangster. No, it's right. true. We've no, but think question. of it. It's called weaponization of government. It's a terrible thing. My point was is that we asked him the question about that sentence and, and what he was trying to mean. And let's move on from that. And that's where the credit ends that I'll be giving Brett Baer because is anyone going to say, well, that's unhinged. That's not. As Vice President Harris pointed out, what you do in a democracy they didn't include there one other example that's important to throw in or one other clip when you're playing the series of those clips is him specifying who the enemy from within is because you've heard a, I believe to be sort of pitiful defense of Trump from some saying, oh no, he meant enemy from within like people who might violently try to interfere in an election like the January 6th people did, I guess, but he means the left. He never said that. And the only example he's given is sick people like Adam Schiff was the phrase uh, that he's used before. So when you include all of those moments, you get the picture of someone who didn't misspeak, who wasn't confused, which he gets confused. Some, that is a defense of him sometimes. But of someone who sees justified going after people he disagrees with politically, who criticize him, who oppose him, who even go after him sometimes in investigations, seeing it justified to use our military to go after them. That's not something that someone who wants to be president of the United States should be saying. That seems so obvious, but I mean, we're here, we're sitting here as he's neck and neck in the polls with a really good shot of, of winning after he said so many things that are disqualifying. So I'm not trying to lead any of you to believe that this is going to be a deal breaker for a single person, because if crossing the uh, dedication to basic norms and democratic principles, if crossing that line, violating those basic principles were a deal breaker for someone, they would have already left Trump based on the things he said and done. And one of the points that Vice President Harris made at the end of the first clip that I played for you was it's not just her, and this applies to me as well, it's not just me saying Trump threatens democracy or is unstable or doesn't care about our constitution. It's people who used to be his top military leaders, like General Mark Milley. And seeing supporters of Trump try to defend or explain away that is something else. Here's an example from CNN. I respectfully disagree with Carl. I, uh, you know, General Milley, speaking on General Milley, he was, like you stated, he was standing him with him next to the Bible and so forth. And while... Which he regretted. These, yeah, uh, but a lot of these people, uh, Anderson, when they're working for him, he's a good guy. President Trump's good when they're working for him. Uh, Donald Trump hasn't changed in his whole life. In 2016, when he ran, well, I don't Donald think they're Trump. saying he was good when they're working for him. Yes, well, they, no. They've left, and they're saying now what that, they saw was. No, no, but what I'm saying terrifying. is that terrifying. they're only coming after President Trump after they leave, or he's been, or they've been fired. One of the two. And on this, wait a minute. So, so you oh, believe so. highly decorated General Milley, General Kelly, who was mm -hmm. the chief of staff, right. yeah. whose son died serving this country, mm -hmm. you believe that they are making stuff up? No, because no, I, they, I, I, I'm not saying that. Anderson. Well, you are. What, what I'm You're saying, saying they're only saying this after they've left. You no, know, what I'm saying, Anderson, they work for President Trump. Right. So they and saw him on a daily basis. While they were, in the, while they were in the White House, President Trump was a good, good president. Well, no, they're then, not saying that. And then now all of a sudden, they're well, not they were, saying he was. A well, good they president. were cashing his check. They were working for him. They were. I mean, well, actually, they were getting paid. They were, I mean, actually, General it, General Milley was working the Pentagon. He was the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. But he works at the pleasure of the president. I mean, at the end of the day, he was working for President Trump. All of a sudden, either Trump fires actually, folks. Actually, most or, people in the military are serving the country and and are have sworn to defend right. the Constitution, not the president. But 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 Anderson, this is I'm I'm talking to you how I feel. How right. people all of a sudden come after President Trump, like on the dock. Then right. we, we, right. we but we, what we, you, how you feel is not factual correct so you're saying things with i have never felt more positive feelings in my life than what i'm feeling right now for anderson cooper finally i think that i'll play the rest of this and let me pull up actually because i think it connects really nicely let's type in millie here wannabe dictator and get that clip queued up but i think a lot of times hosts like Anderson Cooper and others feel that it comes off wrong if they start debating and sparring. They need to moderate the debates, moderate the arguments that go on on air, but their job is not to be a, sort of a debater. But if you come off as a debater, fine, as long as you're doing it 
because you're just correcting as a matter of fact what's being said. And let me play the rest of that CNN exchange, and then I'll show you the Millie moment that emphasizes how wrong this this gentleman is and how correct Anderson Cooper is. And I love that he's willing to, you know, let's just go back and forth. Anderson Cooper's just deciding to inject right whenever it comes up facts when they're needed. Most or, people in the military are serving the country and, and are have sworn to defend right. the Constitution, not the president. But, the but, but Anderson, this is, I'm, I'm talking to you how I feel, how people oh, okay. all of a sudden come after President Trump, like on the dock. Right. We, we, right. But we, what do you, how you feel is not factually correct. So you're saying things which well, no, are not I, factually correct. I, I really correct. believe it's correct. I think a lot of people feel it's correct. The polls say it. I mean, the polls well, are no, supporting. The, right, but, but what people feel and what polls show is not actually factually correct. I'm, you're saying that they were saying he was great while they were serving under him and then for some reason well, later on they're okay, saying he's not this, that's okay, not factually okay, correct. they went to work for him for a reason obviously at, at the pleasure of the president they went to work to to help america to help president trump and all of a sudden they have a disagreement they move on and then he's a fascist right. well he's i don't think we can person. know why he's they went to work for him because i think a lot of military people would say they went to work for an administration because they felt they could perhaps temper that administration's but uh, Anderson, temper policy. President Trump? I mean, Donald Trump in 2016 when he ran, you, you know who he was. You know who he is. That's who he is. Trump is not going to change ever. Is he a fascist? So, wow. How does he not understand how terrible what he's saying sounds? And he goes, well, I, ju I just feel that way. Okay, but I'm, I'm trying to see if the way that you feel is informed by fact or fiction. You keep saying that people like Mark Milley were talking about how great Trump was while they served him, and then they went on to trash him and contradict themselves. No, he didn't. Military leaders aren't in the habit of while they're serving someone going, oh, they're so great. I love them. I serve Trump. Trump is so amazing. No, they're just doing their job. And his argument, the guy's name is Abel, uh, his argument is that the only way your criticism after leaving an administration as a military leader could be credible is if the second, the second a president who has bad character is elected, no matter how many years in the case of, in the case of Mark Milley, decade of service has led you to being at the top of the military, you should just, you should just give it all up. You just leave, not serve your country anymore. You can't be in the military. Only Trump loyalists completely can be in the military. I think he's thinking of a different form of government. It's not this one. Because no, as Mark Milley said, never did he take an oath to Trump. Never did he take an oath to the president. Of course, the commander in chief is at the top of the flow chart, um, top of the food chain. And that's who he reported to. But he takes an oath to the constitution. We don't take an oath to a tribe. We don't take an oath to a religion. We don't take an oath to a king or a queen or to a tyrant or a dictator. And we don't take an oath to a wannabe dictator. We don't take an oath to an individual. We take an oath to the Constitution and we take an oath to the idea that it's America and we're willing to die to protect it. Every soldier, sailor, airman, marine, guardian, and coast guardsman each of us commits our very life to protect and defend that document, regardless of personal price. And to look at someone who's spent their entire life serving the country, numerous people actually, even just focusing on only military leaders who have then spoken out against Trump, to look at them and go, oh, because you didn't immediately resign right whenever Trump became president or because you didn't refuse to be promoted into the position while Trump was president, you have no credibility in what you observed. You, who this guy Abel is talking about, Trump's never going to change. You can never temper him. So you're admitting maybe, hopefully you'd be able to admit that he doesn't have super high character, but you like him because he's going to be bad for you. Bad for good, you know? But would you agree then that probably these highly decorated generals maybe have higher character than Trump? So maybe what they observed is correct and what Trump's saying about them being liars is incorrect? 
But no, Abel says, because they served their country, they were taking a check from Trump. Think about how twisted that is. They were serving, they were giving their loyalty to him by staying in the military. No, no, <laughs> you're, you're all whacked out. That's a dictatorship. Wow. Let me know what you thought in the comments. Support the show by clicking the join button below.